All hail Betty Crocker. All hail Betty Crocker. All hail Betty Crocker. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Welcome to this theme of at least this this video and maybe um the next few videos that I make. I will be using Betty Crocker mixes and repurposing them to make different dishes than what they're intended for. For example, today I will be making crepes out of Betty Crocker's red velvet cake mix. So, yeah, here it is. I set out the cream cheese for the filling to soften and I started to get my butter ready, which is in the next clip we have right here. So I started heating it up to make it melted, which is what general crepe recipes call for. Here's how it was melted. I didn't overheat it like last time. While I was checking the basic crepe ingredient ratios, I noticed that that was already in the cake mix. I cut the top off the bag of mix and put it in the bowl so it looked like this. Next I put in my water, a cup and a quarter. I put in the butter which I think was a tea, four tea, two, spe two teaspoons, two tablespoons, an egg. Someday. Next I put in my milk. Then I mixed it up, but then I realized that the mixing wasn't, like, good enough, so I used a whisk to combine the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients better, so then it looked like this. I turned the stove top to medium heat, which is around, like, 4 on my stove, and then I got out a ladle so I could use it to put it in the pan. So here I am doing my first crepe. I did not grease the pan beforehand because every recipe that I saw told me not to. So here I am putting the first one in. I didn't put that much in just because I was like kind of testing it and I didn't want to waste too much batter even though I had a lot. Um, and I was noticing, I was moving slow because I didn't want to like slosh it everywhere and I wanted it to like move evenly. But I was noticing pretty immediately, I, can, I think you can see it in a few of these clips, that the edges were starting to burn to the pan pretty quickly. So, yeah, this is how it looked. It was nice and asymmetrical, or not asymmetrical, symmetrical. And then while I was trying to move it, this is what happened. It just, it stuck to the pan, essentially. Obviously that didn't work, but I don't think it was because of any sort of actual fault with, like, me not greasing the pan or anything. I think it's because I pulled it too early. So I'm just going to um, try again without greasing the pan. Obviously, I have plenty of batter. And um, if it doesn't work, I'll try to grease the pan and try again. So here is attempt number two. This time, the plan was to leave it on there for longer because before I thought that I didn't cook it for long enough. Like, I tried to flip it too early. So the plan was to do the same thing, this time I put a little bit more batter, not not for any particular reason, but I did. You can already see in these clips that it's starting to burn to the pan. I don't know why I didn't pick up on the fact that I needed to grease the pan quicker. It is a nonstick pan, by the way, it just, it just didn't work as intended. I, d I just needed some cooking spray, so. And then, this is how this one ended up. <laughs> This time I decided it was better off to do everything in like a little cup and try it out. So this time I added some vegetable oil because I thought that would help with it not sticking to the pan. Boy, was I wrong. And then I added some milk to help thin it out some more. So I mix, 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 mix. And then I added it to the pan. Here's me trying it again. This time it was a lot thinner and a lot easier to move around the pan. I still kind of noticed that it was sticking to the bottom, but I just decided to move on. You know, uh, what is it? Show keeps, show never stops. Keep, show must go on. There it is. So, yeah, I just kept working with it. 
and eventually I flipped it. That's coming up right about here. It just, it basically just shrunk. It didn't really stick, but it just shrunk to the bottom. So, yeah. As you can see, it was my mom's brilliant idea to finally put cooking spray on the pan. And you can see already right here, as she's adding some more, spreading it around. I don't know why she wouldn't pick it up, but it was working a lot better. And see, right around here, even though it was super porous, at least she could pick it up and flip it. Here's what it looked like once flipped. So this one right here was the same thing, except the batter didn't have any vegetable oil in it. So the one on the left has vegetable oil in it, and the one on the right doesn't. So the one with the vegetable oil in it was a lot more dense and like wet, and the one without was better. So we ended up adding more milk to the whole batter to make it more thin. I ended up cutting off this clove about five crepes in, but I made probably a total of 20 crepes. And I realized that it was best as I was going along. Uh, obviously, I thinned it out and then to make them super big and super thin, and that's what worked best. I noticed that a lot of these have a lot of like pores open in them. I see where they're like opening, but I made so many crepes and it was so exhausting. This was the best crepe that I made, probably. Most symmetrical, the best one. It was at 1226 that I made it. Woo! Finally, it was time to clean up. I was done and I made a huge mess. Here's all the crepes that I made. I made so many. I actually feel like so fatigued right now. <laughs> I have a headache. Corona time? Lunch time. Once I was done with my ridiculously long lunch, it was time to make the cream cheese filling. So first I beat up the cream cheese that was, as you can see here at the end of this clip, way too cold so it just stuck but whatever I let it sit so I beat it up again after it got a little warmer and then I added the sugar powdered sugar and then I added the milk I think it's pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing now so here's this <clears throat> Picking it up, picking it up. Next, I got together the crepes, the cream cheese spread thing, and um, chocolate chips to make it all come together. Ain't got no tears in my body. I ran up a boy. I like it. I like it. I like it. Don't matter. <clears throat> we out here vibing. Hey, we vibing. Yeah, we vibing. Now, it's time for the judges to taste the crepe. Okay, so, tell me what you made for me. Oh, today I made for you, um, um, red velvet cake crepes. Mm-hmm. I see, okay. It's a little like jelly-like in its texture. Okay, I understand. But it's okay. I'm going for, I think it's nice and cute. I like the powdered sugar. And the... Cocoa.
think that I like it. I think that the chocolate and the cream cheese on the inside is a nice touch in addition to the red velvet flavor. What did you say? What did you say this is again? Crepes. A crepe? I use um, red velvet cake mix and then I put water and um, milk in it. You see, I'm getting, it's kind of like a sad little pancake. I see that it's more cakey than a crepey. Sorry, chef. But other than that, it's very good. Thank you, chef. Okay, bye. So yeah, that's the end of the video. Basically, all I have to say about the crepes, I'm sorry if you came here to like actually learn how to make crepes out of cake mix. I wasn't very specific in my direction giving, but like, the only, they were, they actually tasted really good. They tasted nice, like, they weren't too overly sweet. They, they, they tasted very good. I really like that cream cheese filling. I would 100%, 100% recommend. The only thing was that because it was cake mix it wasn't quite the right the right texture it was more like spongy and obviously it had those holes in it because it was so porous and it was bubbling the texture was more spongy than like crispy and soft like a traditional pancake or crepe but other than that it tasted really good like 10 out of 10 I would recommend so yeah that's that's the end of the video No, I actually haven't had crepes before.